Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today we're going to be putting very, very thin lines, this very, very thin pattern into gel prints. And I'm going to be using a tool that you can find in all the finest hardware stores. Dryer vent. Yep, this duct, that dryer vent stuff, it makes a great pattern making tool. You're going to see how I do that and be sure to see how there's a hybrid ghost print thing happening at the end. First thing we want to do is get some paint onto our gel plate. I'm using the 12 by 14 gel plate here, but of course this technique will work on any size plate. Now the first paint that I put on there, that was the PBO iridescent paints. And then I've got this purple on here that is super thick because it's getting old in the tube. And so why would this purple neon from Plaza Art that I absolutely adore, why would I let it get old in the tube? Because I'm having a hard time finding that exact shade again. So it's becoming scarce, it's becoming precious to me, and then I would hold back on using it, but I've done that so much that now this thing is getting thick. So I need to either use it or it's gonna dry out and I'll never get to use it. Has that ever happened to you where you've hoarded a supply and when you finally decide it's time to use it, you go to it and it's completely dried up or it's unusable? It's happened to me more than once and that's why I'm bound to determine not to let it happen to this purple. So now we've got two colors on here, one lighter, one darker, with kind of an ombre in the middle. To get the dryer vent duct here ready to use, it's very flexible, it's fun, but I found that it's easier to roll with it if you put something in it, like a dowel rod, which I've got here. You can use a stick from outside, a rolling pin, a heavy cardboard tube, whatever you've got. Just something there so that you can hold on to it and easily roll it. Then it's just like using a rolling pin. You roll it back and forth, you can go slowly, you can go quickly, and you can roll it as many times as you want. And all those fine lines are showing up, creating almost like a grain to what this print is gonna have. Some of the purple's gonna be on the top and some of the blue's gonna be on the bottom. So basically, all the colors are all over the place. If you wanna get a complete print and not have any, say, areas where the paint doesn't transfer, you actually wanna push the paper down everywhere and not skip a couple of spots. Yeah, you know what's about to happen, right? So I've got a couple of areas where there's more white space. That's simply because I didn't push the paper down all the way there. Turns out the paper and the paint really have to come into contact if you want them to stick together. Since I used a plate that was larger than my piece of paper, that means I've got some more color and fun waiting for me over here. So that's why I'm using tags to make sure I can get up all of that wonderful pattern and color. Not a drop of paint ever has to be wasted when you're gel printing. Now, could I have used a scrap piece of paper to do this? Absolutely. Could I have done it right into a journal? You bet. Could I have used any other paper that I had or anything else that I wanted? Sure. I just happened to have tags handy, so that's what I grabbed. And you might be thinking, okay, have we gotten all the paint up that we're going to? And the answer is no. Sure, we've got a great print, we've got some tags, but there's still more to be had. And we're gonna go a little beyond just a straight ghost print because there's still paint on that dryer vent. So I am gonna roll that paint back onto the plate. So that's gonna make it kind of like a hybrid ghost print and first print all in one. You can probably tell I get really excited about making gel prints and understanding why it's happening and ways to get the most out of that plate and paint. And if you'd like to know more ways to gel print, if you'd like to know more about it, check out my online workshop called Gel Printing Fundamentals. As I put this piece of paper on here, I am making sure that I've got good contact everywhere. I learned my lesson a little earlier in this video. Well, okay, I didn't really learn my lesson. I'm remembering it a few minutes later. We'll see if a day from now, if I still remember that. But for now, I made sure I had really good contact for the paper and the paint so that when I lifted it up, I've got the entire pattern everywhere. Because one of the colors was an iridescent color, that means the whole thing has a little bit of shine to it. And yep, there's still paint on there and you bet I wanna use it. But this time, I'm not gonna put a plain piece of white paper on there. I'm gonna use a paper that already has some of these colors on it, the paper I was using to clean off my brayer with. And this is a great time to use that brayer cleanup paper because there's really not enough paint or pattern on the gel plate to fill in an entire piece of paper, but to do some of the edges, to add a little bit here and there, to add a little more pattern interest, now that it's just perfect for. And is this deep thought that I'm doing? Am I really planning this out? No, not at all. 
my thought process is, hey, there's white space on the paper and hey, there's some pattern and color on the plate. So I'm putting them together until I've either got all of the spaces filled in on the paper or no other paint comes off of the plate. Well, thanks for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button so you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. Thanks for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.